Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, I want to explain a concept that's very important um, when you're looking at power supplies, switch mode power supplies, like boost converters, like the PFC converter we've been looking at. Now, it doesn't matter if it's just a normal boost converter or a PFC. The PFC is a little bit more comp uh, complicated than the standard boost converter, but they both have some a lot of similarities. So um, I want to talk about the inductor. The inductor is a, it's like the heart of the boost uh, converter. So, you know, understanding that, everything else is kind of easy. It's just picking parts. And we're going to go over how you pick your parts too and how to pick the fat and how to pick the controller and how to set it up, okay? But picking the inductor, it's kind of like, hey, we're going to have a car we're going to have, what is it going to be, a race car? Is it going to be a sedan? What's it going to be? we got to pick the engine. And then you pick the transmission. You pick all the other stuff out, right? Oh, let's go pick out some tires. So once you have settled on the inductor and how to size that bad boy, then everything else falls into place. So let me talk to you about a very important principle called volt seconds, okay? And it also helps just kind of, I, I, I don't know, I like to picture how the electrons are running around the circuit. And, you know, that's the way my mind kind of works is I look at a circuit and picture things. And, you know, so maybe math makes more sense to you, uh, whatever. But so I think I'm, I've got a way to explain both seconds. So, and, you know, I talked about my last video, in the PFC converter video, I'll put a link to it. Um, so you can go look at pictures of actual PFC working and where I talk about the um, volt second principle. But I'm going to show you another way to look at it. We're going to just focus on that this video. So any boost converter, and for that matter, buck converter, all the converters, and if you're looking at a forward converter, the output section where you have an LC filter, it's essentially the same thing. Okay, so let's take a look at this, okay? I'm going to pull up my board. Hey, it's like magic. <laughs> um, I'm trying to look to see if the lighting's okay. All right, so hopefully no reflections. Now, this is the PFC with the pulsating DC coming in off the bridge rectifier, which is the low frequency switcher. Keep on drilling that in your guys' heads. Anyway, uh, boost converter. You have a capacitor that feeds the inductor and the transistor switching on and off, okay? The inductor feeds this diode and the capacitor out here. The inductor stores energy whenever this guy switched on and off. Now an interesting thing I'll just point out, I always do this in videos, I'm pointing out one thing, but then something else comes to mind and I wanna point that out just so you keep that in mind as well. If this guy's not switching on and off, and let's say we want 24 volts out here and we have 12 volts coming in, we're gonna boost it up to 24, okay? If it's not switching, what happens? Well, current's going to flow through the inductor, through the diode. So if you have 12 volts here, you have an LC filter with the diode in between. So you just have 12 volts out here, minus the voltage drop here. Okay? If you have a lot of current flowing, you might have some voltage drop here too. So that's one of the things about a boost converter is you can't monitor the current with this and turn it off and say, oh, turn off power to the output. Buck converters, you can. Because buck converter, you switch places with these things, but it's in it's in line with the input and the output. But boost converter, it's not. It's sitting over here just resting. So let's say power turns on and current starts to flow, okay? Well, um, you got 12 volts out here, Let's say you just have a very small load at the time, whatever. You have a little bit of current flowing through here. Then this guy turns on and then he turns off. When he turns on, uh, he's gonna pull current to ground, right? You got a loop. This is one of your power loops, okay? When he turns off, then the current goes to this capacitor and you got a power loop this way and out to your load and well, actually, from your load to this capacitor, kind of. It, then you got kind of two parallel loops. You got the big loop and this one, if this guy's off just sitting there. 
But, you know, boost converters actually boost the things. So they don't just sit there and stay off. So this guy's switching. Um, he pulls him to ground. The current, whatever he happened to be, let's say one amp is flowing through there, DC-wise. Well, now all of a sudden he goes short. And so now you got a short here, basically, to ground. Well, you do, right? So all the voltage here is pushing current through this into ground. So the current in an inductor does not want to switch instantly, right? Kind of like a uh, voltage on a capacitor doesn't want to switch instantly. It has to charge up, has to, you know, charge that capacitor up until it's full. And then, you know, voltage comes up slow. Current can switch instantly back and forth, but voltage cannot. Inductor, it's the opposite. So inductor, uh, we got one amp flowing. All of a sudden, this guy switches on. So now he starts to ramp up. And he just ramps up linearly, okay? That's what this equation is. It's a linear equation. There's no squared term or no squared root term or anything like that. It's just V equals L uh, times change of current divided by change of time, okay? So when I close this, then what's going to happen is current's going to ramp up in this inductor, and then it's going to ramp down when it turns off. When it turns off, Again, current doesn't want to change instantly, so it's ramped up, and then it goes, oh, I'm not sure anymore, so now I'm going to just supply my current out here so it ramps down. So if this guy is 50% duty cycle, let's say 10 microseconds is a period, and so 5 microseconds it charges up, 5 microseconds it charges, it discharges, okay? So maybe it's charging from one amp, you know, where it started to, right? Maybe there's no load, so it's starting from zero. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's still going to charge the same peak current, and, and it's going to discharge the same peak down. So if there was one amp, and let's say this charges up to, say, three amps, it's going to go up to three amps, come down three amps, and it'll be, still be one amp. If it was zero current, like this had no load, it'll go... Up three amps, down three amps. Doesn't matter. This equation doesn't matter what's going on out here. Okay. It's just telling you, hey, if this is five microseconds, we're gonna have a change of current this much depending on what this is and what this is. Okay. So that's what this is. If you're trying to find the value of the inductor, you can say, well, we had 12 volts here, we're on for five microseconds. And we and then we could if we measure the current we could say oh that's what the inductance is. Okay, so now the important principle that I want to talk about is called the volt seconds, which we saw in the last video. But I want to explain that now what that actually means. Okay, so let's take a closer look and change my whiteboard. All right, guys. So this equation here, the one in red, is the one I always remember. And the way I remember my head is volts is equal to inductance times, uh, well, I go V equals L D I D T. That's the way I think of it. So I don't, you know, this is a delta symbol. I, I just say D I D T. So you can't show the little D for like the uh, differential equation thing, but same thing, okay? So V equals L D I D T. Change of current divided by change of time. That equation is one of the most important equations that you can know, okay? And then manipulating it and all that kind of stuff just helps you figure out things and helps you understand what's going on. So volt seconds. Volt times seconds. How do I get that? I multiply both sides of the equation by change of time. So volts times the change of time. And if I multiply change time here, it just cancels, right? Change time divided by change time turns into one. So cross multiplication, right? So I got volt times seconds. That's your volt seconds principle. What does that mean? That's your inductor and your change of current. So you remember how I said the current, if the current ramps up three amps, it comes down three amps. If it's changing three amps and the inductor is a fixed value, then these two things are the only things that can change. If the change of time, if 
I'm saying it's 50% duty cycle, change goes up three amps, comes down three amps, then um, it's the same either way, right? So let me just back up for a second. When I'm trying to calculate the value of this guy on this formula here, if I the easiest way to do it on a boost converter is when this guy goes to zero, because I have essentially zero volts here. And if it's not a PFC, a PFC makes it a little bit more complicated. But let's just say it's that 12 volt converter we're boosting it to 24. If it's 12 volts over here, then I know I have 12 volts across my inductor. So that makes it simple, right? But that, that gives me the ramp up current, okay? Now the ramp down current, I can calculate that too. So then what I do is I go, okay, what's the volts during the ramp down? During the ramp down, this guy's off. I have 12 volts here, I have 24 over here. So it's 24 minus 12. That's the voltage across the inductor. I'm back to 12 again. All right, so you, you see where I'm getting there? So it's the same equation, same current, same time. It has to be. So that's the principal volt seconds. If the time's the same, for on and off time, so if this change time is during the on time, when this is on, you'd write maybe on here. So you say, okay, during on, my my voltage is this, Vn minus zero, you know, would be that. Now, if you're getting really stickler, you can say, oh, it's minus 0 0.2 volts or something. 12 volts minus 0.2. It's gonna change a, a small fraction, right? And then also, uh, during the off time, if I'm going to calculate it during the off time, it's when the current's ramping down. When the current's ramping down, change the time or change the current. It's the same current, but my time and my time's the same five microseconds. But my voltage, I could say, well, it's 24 minus, you know, this 0.5 volts, 0.4 volts from a shock key, and also minus this volt. So it'd be 24 minus this minus that. So it's 24 minus 12.5. Four, let's say. So again, that's being a stickler, right? But if you're really being precise, that's where you do it. Now, if you're really being precise, that would also mean to get 24 volts over here, if you're regulating that, the duty cycle might shift a little bit from 50% just to adjust for, say, this 0.2 volts versus this 0.4 volts. It's going to be a fraction, you know? So... It, you can bog yourself down with these fractions, and it's okay to do that when you really want to get down the dirt. But to give yourself a very close approximation, you know, just make it more idealized, okay? So what that means is, like, let's say if I was 12 volts and I was going to 36 volts. Well, then my duty cycle is not going to be 50%. It's going to be something different. And so my volt seconds are going to change over here. So maybe one time it's 12 volts times a certain time, and then the other time it's gonna be 12 minus 36 would be 24 volts, so it'd be twice the voltage. So that means the time's gonna be half as much because that has gotta be equal in both cases. It's a volt second principle. Because this can't change during the circuit, and, and we want the same current, it's gonna be it's not gonna, the current's not gonna ramp up and then shift one amp and then ramp down. It's gonna go up to whatever current it is, three amps, four amps, whatever, and it's gonna drop from there. So you're gonna, your, your current, change of current's gonna be the same each time. Your inductor is not changing. So those things are set depending on your load and your circuit. The thing that changes is this. So when you're calculating the current during the rise time, it's going to be 12 volts, whatever the input is. Okay? What and and the case where I'm saying 36, it's going to be 24 volts across here now. Now it's 36 minus 12, it's 24 across here. In that case, the voltage is now double. So the time to make it equal to the ramp up, the ramp down has to be equal. So that means the time's going to be half as much as it was during the time up. So that's the volt second principle, okay? This is just a quick video to kind of explain that a little bit more. 
and you guys ask your questions and all that kind of stuff and we'll talk more about this and I'm gonna have more videos where I'm gonna actually demonstrate this and show more pictures and stuff but I just wanted to make this kind of short and just show the math part of this and see what you guys think now these design videos I do they get a lot less people watching them so I hope you guys not only give a thumbs up but if you like them subscribe because that'll that'll help me out um, yeah doing these uh, you know let's say if I'm doing a review video on a multimeter or something they get a lot more views and by the way Golden Leak just sent me this uh, life pole this is a LFP battery that's pretty cool huh so you can get life pole batteries in a little small battery like that too anyway that's pretty cool I've got some some of these kind of videos I'm gonna do but uh, and when I start doing those kind of videos you know the views are gonna be like audio videos uh, like say or oscilloscope videos power supply videos they all do a lot more than actual design videos so give me the like and give me comments share and subscribe that all helps me and shows me that you want me to do these kind of videos okay so I just want to do this on the tail end of uh, the last video because I just kind of brought up volt seconds during that video and I thought yeah I'm gonna you know this is one of those things where I'll touch on multiple times until the people that are interested that watch these videos it'll kind of start sinking in you know start getting a good understanding of what I'm talking about so <laughs> let me know what you think about that and let me know if this video helped okay maybe I need to show more pictures I'm trying to you know it's kind of late night got home kind of late tonight at work so hey it's my first day on the job I went from a contractor to a permanent employee today so big thumbs up <laughs> uh, all right guys yeah so this is my second job so uh, but you know it's my hobby too right sometimes it feels like a job so all right guys uh, yeah I tried to do some videos while I was on my vacation so yeah anyway um, thanks for watching and let me know what you guys think, and we're going to do more of this John Audio Tech collaboration power supply design for audio amplifiers. And, you know, it can be for anything, not just audio amplifiers, but that's what we're kind of focusing on because it's real hard to find, find those kind of power supplies. So, all right, guys. Thanks. We'll catch you next time.